The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Daikin Brands. Today, we're joined with Mike Saylor. He's the president of Steely River Mechanical. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Yep, happy to be here. So, Mike, I, I love to start this off with a, a simple question. How in the world did you get into HVAC? You want the long answer or the short answer? Because it could take like 30, 40 minutes. Well, so. let's go somewhere in between. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go the short. Um, through high school, I participated in a lot of FFA, a lot of mechanical competitions, a lot of things like that. Um, found myself going, okay, secondary education. Want to do something hands-on, something involved electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and everything. That naturally led me into um, discovering the HVAC field, which before that, I didn't know it existed. Mm -hmm. um, went to a community college, went through a program, worked as I was going to school, um, got out, worked with some wonderful companies, um, came back home because that program was on the other side of the state. And when that happened, went to work for another company who um, completely lacked ethics and morals. And it, it, was, it was a good thing in hindsight because it forced me to, I knew how a company could be operated and operated well and ethically. So pushed out on my own in 2006 and never looked back. So it's been a lot of fun since. That's awesome. Uh so to tie that back in, when did you put in your first Daikin uh, system? Uh, probably about 2008, 2009. We had another manufacturer we were working with, but the technical support wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and after having a situation where we needed help, um, where their system wasn't performing, and it wasn't an install issue, it was an equipment issue, and lack, that lack of support and being told, quite frankly, by tech support, like we have other customers to serve and being hung up on, uh, sealed the deal on that. So. Um, pushed into Daikin and had a sales rep that was more than happy to get that phone call. And the support's been wonderful. Um, the equipment's great. Uh, the serviceability has been phenomenal because you got the D checker. If there's ever mm -hmm. any issues, we can go in oftentimes when we're dealing with a homeowner, if they have questions, sometimes even if they're not home, you know, okay, the, you know, they're like, I'm not sure if this is running right and it's a little bit cool out. We can swing by, hook up the D checker on the outdoor unit take some measurements. We're not being intrusive on the customer. Not, we're not in and out of the house as much. Um, that really helps. So it's really good for the customer experience and also being able to uh, serviceability. What would you say the diff your, uh, your mix or, or the differences in, in, in mix in between your unitary ducted system versus ductless systems that you have? That keeps um, shifting. Okay. Um, more and more, there's a reduction in the unitary products. Um, what we're dealing with um, where we're at is the envelopes of the houses were not allowed to be as intrusive with the duct work as we used to be. Mm -hmm. So I'd say probably about 70% plus in the ductless market now um, versus, you know, say unitary or hydronic or something. So it's, it's primarily the biggest piece of the market that we have. And where do you see your AC heat pump split? Uh, the AC heat pump split splits probably about 20% of it. So um, we're dealing with a situation where, Fossil fuels are being aggressively phased out in Washington state. Mm -hmm. So that's leading us to try and find alternatives that fit into the solutions on these existing homes and R32 and um, it's done a very nice job and Daikin's done a great job. with that. So uh, we heard uh, a couple of years ago that uh, there was going to be some new regulation that was coming out and uh, looking for uh, lower global warming potential refrigerants. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Daikin announced early on that they were going to be going with R32 and, in fact, brought a product out called Atmosphera. Uh, when did you put in your first Atmosphera product? Oh, probably about a little over a year, year and a half ago. Um, we kind of brought the product in early because we were trying to find a solution. Um, this was kind of, we were still suffering from some of the supply chain shortages. Mm -hmm. So that caused us to be very particular about what we were bringing in. So looking at some of the changes in the industry and the ratings, um, and then sitting down and doing the math on what's coming and what our 410A is capable versus 32. And even before we add our SEER 2 ratings, 
um, deciding to kind of invest into the atmospheres, bring those in, stock them up and have them, you know, ready. And the market we were kind of going for is kind of the lower middle income. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, being able to go in, make a big difference on a house with just a one-to-one head. And that's, it's really excelled. So tell me how, what was the consumer reaction, uh, if any, as you were uh, making the switch from 410A to R32? I think the consumers see how excited we are about in the industry. Mm -hmm. So they, they feel that excitement. Um, they're relying on us to educate them on what something is. Um, so th they're not very educated about it, but what they're looking for is, Hey, what can I get for rebates? What will qualify for, you know, the utility rebates, state rebates, the federal rebates, um, and really trying to go after that market and then being able to bring in a quality system for that customer that we can say, Hey, you know, you've got a 12 year parts and labor warranty. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about this. There's a lot of comfort for that. Um, and being able to just support that product, explain that we can go in with the D checker, we can service this, we can see it, we can have the support we need through. We have some very challenging electrical grids at times. So we've gotten to watch uh, kind of these things go through hell and back on some power outages and power surges, and they've done phenomenal. So being able to bring that level of experience to it and say, hey, this is what we've had, positive outcome. You know, we haven't had negatives here and just, you know, bring that comfort to our customer. So you mentioned that uh, your, you and your company are excited about R32. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like for the technicians, the installers, when they first decided to go and start putting R32, going from 410A to R32? Um, part of that is, I guess, where it started on the path for us is any, you know, guys in HVAC are like kids in candy stores. So mm -hmm. we got ourselves, we got a hold of one of the first R32 units that came out one of the atmosphere and the natural thing is to just take it into the office, you know, in a staff meeting, whip out a tool bag and just rip the whole thing apart. Um, and that's what we did. So they were excited to see the installers were excited to see how it comes apart. Um, some of the changes, the drain pans can be removed. So service was excited about that. The installers were excited because the same tools that they, they are, we didn't have to go purchase more tools mm -hmm. than what we already had. Um, and we started looking into some of the regulations on the tools and stuff. And it was kind of everything we had was already rated for the A2L refrigerants. So it's already commonplace. So if someone's making a switch from one to the other, likelihood is they're already okay. So, yeah. So, so Daikin uh, started off back in 2012 <coughs> in Japan with mm -hmm. their R32 units. And uh, Daikin announced early on that uh, we were going to be going with R32. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're starting to hear some of the other manufacturers are saying, hey, we're going 454B. Have you done any research or any looked into the differences? And, and what's kind of your take from a contractor perspective? Okay, so I'll start that out as kind of my, my the reason I like 32 so much is the density per pound of R32 versus 410A. It can carry 11% more BTUs per pound. Mm -hmm versus 410A. Okay, now you look at 454B, you cannot carry as many BTUs as R410A. So R32 is going to excel um, both on longevity of equipment because if you're trying to move a certain amount of heat, you only have to run your equipment 11% you know, slower, or mm -hmm. in this case, 89% of the speed of the compressor to get the same BTUs. And with that, your equipment's going to last longer. Um, you're going to have better longevity. But the big thing that we see is the energy efficiency because it's not having to work as hard. So our RPMs on the compressors, we even went through and switched out um, just as an experiment at the shop, the R410A units that we have, the existing 3MXSs and there's like a 4MXS just as a laboratory experiment over to from 410A over to 32. And we actually, as the shop, we noticed that there was a reduction in our energy consumption just in heating the shop. Um, and the secretaries all said that it was more comfortable. So, hmm. you know, I, I don't know how, you know, technical that can be, but there was definitely a, uh, improvement in comfort. Um, now you look at 454B. I'm not a fan of 454B because it's actually running at a higher pressure than our 410A. So with that, you're going to have to have higher head pressures. You're going to have to have, you know, you're literally going to take more power to create the same amount of heat, but they're going to compensate with larger coils and other things, but I can rattle on about it, but I really love 32 is more of the story. Okay. 
Um, and, and obviously I think just your passion about it uh, is probably contagious to all of the employees and, and everybody that's working for you. Oh yeah. Everyone likes to see a change in the industry. Sales gets a little bit apprehensive initially, but then they start to see how things are and how the customer experience is in the end. And they're very happy. It's awesome on the atmosphere having an existing, you know, they're set up to where the customer can set them up on their Wi-Fi. They can get moving. And there, there's a lot of benefits that are already built into the unit. And that's a big value for us because we're not having to spend the extra labor to set some, something up. And, you know, it's just, it's a great system. So what has your, uh, your service experience been? I know it's been just a, a year since you've been putting them in, uh, but uh, any, any service experience that um, you've had so far? They've been a solid unit. The only challenge we've had is some defrost, but it was due to third-party controller. Mm. And it's just Dykin's working on kind of smoothing that out. and. Um, the uh, defrost clock essentially being reset on the unit every time it's turned off from the controller. Hmm. But that was an isolated incident, and Daikin's on top of it, which is kind of nice. Um, but other than that, as out of the box, it's been phenomenal. We haven't had an issue, and you know, we're probably 150 units or more in, so okay. they're, they're, they're doing pretty good. Well, that's great to hear. Um, we're obviously going to be making this transition throughout all of 2024 as we start to bring mm -hmm. on more and more unitary product with R32. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to as uh, as we do bring on bring in more and more of the unitary product for R32? So for R32, just kind of overall and what we're looking forward to and the experiences we have, uh, the market that we have, we go all the way from you know sea level, very mild climate, all the way up into the mountains of Washington State. So mm -hmm. we have a varied um, experience of our customer base. So what we're trying to do is meet those obligations with the least amount of inventory. Um, what's going to be nice bringing in on the unitary side when 32 comes in, it'll allow us product that will fit both applications, say at sea level where we're really mild mm -hmm. weather and then kind of up in the mountains where we've got a little bit more severe challenges, snowpack and, you know, but having that tool in our toolbox is really going to, we're looking forward to that. So it should help. Well, Mike, I really appreciate you coming out here and joining us. Do you have any last thoughts or words of wisdom that you want to Oof. share with all your fellow contractors out there? Um, if you're not doing duckless, you need to start doing it. Um, doesn't matter how old your company is. It's simple. It's where the future is going. Um, everything's kind of, you know, 32 is going to end up taking over, and it'll be kind of fun to watch. All right. Well, Thank you, everyone, for watching our show today. I would encourage you, if you liked this episode and you'd like to see more of these types of episodes, please go ahead and like it. Also, please make sure that you follow us in order to be informed of all of the latest episodes that we have come out. Mike, thank you so yep. much for joining Thanks for us. Time.